is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The natural mind does not understand the things of the spirit. So the title of the song is The Goodness of God. Is anybody excited about the goodness of God? For all that he has done for you. A lot of people started this year like they are gone, like they are gone forever and ever. You can't see them again. But we are grateful to be alive and we are well and we are standing in his presence. Lord, we glorify you, Lord. We bless your name, O oh God. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Do I have witnesses this evening? Hey, all my life you have been faithful Ooh. all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing I didn't forget of the goodness of God you say oh my to beg for food I don't have to beg for where I live you have been so so good with every breath I will say yes of the goodness of God oh, your goodness is running out it's running after me hey. Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything yeah. oh. Your goodness is running after It's running after me It's the goodness of God running after you Your goodness is running It's running, it's running out with my life. I surrender now. I'll give you everything. Your goodness is running, it's running, it's running out me. Oh, all my life, you have been faithful. All my life. Of the goodness, yes, Lord. Oh, I will say of the goodness. Personalize it, put your name on it. I will sing of the goodness, yes, Lord. For the last time, I will sing yeah. of the goodness. Oh, A call, a people, a gathering of leaders in faith and in Christ, in commerce and industry, in sports and entertainment, in beauty and fashion, in government and in education, in spirit and in truth. We are moved with a passion and zeal for the lost and the hurting world. We are equipped to build bridges and raise platforms to society. 
We stress cultural relevancy and yet harmonize our diversity as we communicate by all means our message. We are gathering of the saints, raising leaders and rebuilding nations. We're privileged to have um, Pastor Abraham in the house today. Is one of the... <laughs> Pastor Abraham is one of the fathers in this land, but it's not just, um, it's a man of love that truly cares, and a man that, you know, I, I lose words to express how I feel about him. But I want to say, you know, it's a man I truly love, respect, and honor. Um, it's uh, among the very few ministers of God that um, they very humble. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So we are privileged to have him in the house today. Praise the living Jesus. Pastor Abraham is the senior pastor of Sinfan, which is Christian Fellowship for All Nations Ministry which is located in Chicago, Illinois, which is a thriving church, rapidly growing and built on the power of the word of God and prayer. He has been ministry full-time since 1996 and has served in two other ministries prior to becoming senior pastor at Sifan, Chicago. His audience, fans, and critics alike span the theologian and cultural left and right. He is well known for his innate ability to shift the body of Christ through extensive study of the Bible and intense prayer and fasting. Pastor Abraham received a BA in English from the University of Illinois, Nigeria, a diploma in religious study, and is the author of six books. Pastor Adesanya is an avid teacher in the Word of God and believer strongly in the grace of God as the only thing worthy of our boasting. With a skillful miss in his presentation, clear biblical teaching and compassion for those who are hurting the most, in particular marriages on the verge of divorce and victim of abuse and assault. Abraham has taken biblical Christianity into cultural corners, previously unexplored by evangelicals. Pastor Adesoya is a lover of music and his best instrument is tenor, Soprano. Overall, <laughs> his greatest joy, which remains one of the driving force behind his passion for prayer and fasting program, is to see God's people immensely blessed by empowering them through the word of God and the gift of the spirit from within. With Jesus' joy, gathering of the saints. Please, let's make more Michael, Pastor Abraham Adisha. Praise the Lord. Where did you get this from? <laughs> Praise the Lord such a joy to be here tonight and uh, Pastor Wilson is not just uh, another pastor in Chicago he's a friend and um, I'm very close to their family praise the Lord I do not take this opportunity for granted I consider it a great honor praise the Lord now I also have um, the head of our Sunday school teacher here Mama Mibel <laughs> also, Brad Debo. A few other people will have joined us, but um, incidentally, they have a meeting that started 1 p.m. in the church, and they are still there. But their heart is here. Tomorrow, we're going to have a full house. Yeah. Praise the Lord. 
Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you because we have you. We thank you because you've been good unto us. We thank you because you have been faithful. You have shown us mercy. You have released grace that we cannot describe upon us. We are who we are today by your grace. There is nobody here that can boast of any other thing outside of your grace. We are standing by your grace. We are advancing by your grace. We have all the material blessings we have, all the spiritual blessings by your grace. Father Lord, we just thank you. Today, as we go into your word again, we pray that you open our heart, open our ears, give us understanding, give us the grace to retain knowledge, that at the end of the day, your name alone may be glorified. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord, somebody. If you are truly excited, shout a better hallelujah. Let us sit down. The title of this convection is um, Showers of Blessing. By experience, I have come to realize that uh, when a program like this is taking place, the man of God does not just choose uh, a title randomly. He must have waited on God, and God must have spoken unto him uh, his mind. So this title is not just another title. It is a title to bless somebody in the house. And I pray by the Spirit of the living God, you will not miss your portion. Amen you will not miss your portion. Amen. Ezekiel 34, verse 25 and 26. The Bible says, I will make a peace, a covenant of peace with them, and cause wild beasts to cease from the land, and they will dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I will make them, and the places all around my hill, a blessing. And I will cause showers high. You can see the pronoun high there. This is God talking. High. I'm going to get to that later on. I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. Not blessings. There shall be showers of blessing singular so you want to ask what is that blessing i would say it is empowerment to become the bible says in john chapter 1 verse 10 jesus christ was in the world the world was made by him he went to his own his own did not receive him verse 12 says but as many has received him he gave them the power to become the sons of god and also the daughters of god praise the lord Hallelujah. praise the lord Hallelujah. so the blessing is a mandate to prevail it is what the blessing is what brings the blessings amen the Bible says when Abraham was stricken in age, he called all the sons of the concubines. He gave them their inheritance and he sent them far away from Isaac. But to Isaac, he gave his all. What was his all? Pronouncement. Blessing. And when Isaac was going to die, he passed down the blessing to Jacob. You know, we know the story. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to shock you with a statement. The gospel you have received is a prosperity gospel. Hello, somebody. <laughs> the 
the gospel that you have received, the gospel handed down by God to our fathers and our fathers to us, is a gospel of prosperity. Hello. <laughs> I will just touch on it briefly. In Genesis chapter number 1, verse 28, the Bible says, And God blessed them. The first word, the first statement, the created man was going to hear was a word of blessing. When God called Abraham out, he said, I will bless you and make you a blessing. The Bible says, when there was nothing greater than God with which he could swear, he said, he swore by himself, he said, in blessing, I will bless thee. The Bible says, you will not forget, you must not forget the Lord God who gave you the power to get to worlds. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8 verse 9. Chapter number 8 verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, though he was yet for your sakes, he became, somebody finish it, that through his poverty you might Somebody say, the gospel I have is a prosperity gospel. You see, when they talk about prosperity gospel, they are talking about ministers taking advantage of their members to enrich themselves. But that's wrong. That's manipulation. The real prosperity gospel is that God called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You that were not a person, a people before, he has called you, praise the Lord, to become his own people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, praise the Lord, a peculiar people, praise the Lord. So when they say, I don't want prosperity gospel, it's a cause, I want prosperity gospel. The Bible says, I wish you above all things that you may prosper even as your soul prospered. Praise the Lord. The intention of God is for us to do well. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. Praise the Lord. Look at all those blessings. If you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you not it's not like they are going to pass you no they are going to just overwhelm you praise the lord hello the prosperity is a pro the gospel is a prosperity gospel so we are talking about the showers of blessing and it's going to come down upon you Amen. praise the lord quickly what are the things that qualify you for the showers of blessing? I was just touch briefly on this because I know this house is a house of bread. It's a house of what? When I say bread, I mean the word. God has gifted you with a pastor that is that has the word. Praise the Lord. So I'm not just I'm not going to teach like I'm teaching babies. I'm going to teach like I'm teaching adults. Praise the Lord. The first thing that qualifies anybody for the promised showers of blessing is that they are addicted to the kingdom of God. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things. They will be added. So you don't seek the kingdom, you miss it. Praise the Lord. The second thing that qualifies you is that you are a lover of God with all of your heart, all of your strength, all of your soul, and with everything that you have. When we conduct weddings and people exchange vows, one of the vows they, they, they give is that I, I, I bestow on thee or I endow thee 
or I honor thee with my body, right? And with all my worldly goods. That means whatever I have is yours. So until we get to the point that we love God not just for bread, but for who he is. In John chapter 6, the Bible says, After Jesus Christ had fed the people and were all fed, he departed. And they were looking for him, and they were, they, were, they were determined that they were going to force him to become a king over them. So that they don't need to go to grocery stores anymore. This man will just command bread anyway. So Jesus Christ saw them. He said, you seek me, not because of the miracles, not because of the sign of God, but because you ate bread and are filled. He says, seek God. Seek those things that are more than bread. And he began to tell them, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Your father ate manna in the wilderness and are dead. Ah, they say, this man is mad. <laughs> How old are you? You are not even 33 years old. You must love God. Let's quickly look at Mark chapter 12. Verse 29, this was when somebody uh, uh, tested Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is here, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love. It is not, it is not uh, an admonition. It's an instruction of commandment. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. With all your soul, with all your mind, with thy strength, this is the first and the greatest commandment. I mean, being in ministry for 20 something years, talk about pastors using members, talk about members using pastors. People will just come, they use you and dump you, they are just in the church. Just to get something. And the moment they got it, they are gone. I met a woman at um, the uh, uh, car wash on Ridge and um, uh, what do you call it now? Is it Ridge and Peterson or whatever? Yeah. And she was looking at me and smiling. And I went to her, I greeted her. I said, Mama Bija, how are you? She said, You remember me? I said, Yes, of course, I remember you. She said, Hey. I said, so, so I gave her a story. She said, I'm sorry. Why? They told her she could never have children. And she was coming to church. And I was praying with her. My own principle is this. You don't have to leave your church to come to our church before I pray for you. You come for prayer, go back to your church. My father's house, there are many mansions. It's the same place. So she was coming, and God answered her. The moment she conceived, she ran away. And then she delivered. And one of her friends that brought her now told me, so the person is pregnant, but she wants to give the glory to God in her church. I said, who cares? The glory is to God, not to any man. So she said, eh, I, I, I should have come to your church. I said, look, 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 forget about that. You've gotten what you want. It's not about what we can get. It's about throwing ourselves completely into God. And God is looking at the heart. Praise the Lord. Man can look at the outward like Samuel. He saw uh, the, 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 the tallest guy in the family of uh, David. He said, ah, the Lord's anointed. God said, I've rejected him. God will not reject you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The third thing that qualifies you for the showers of blessing that God has revealed to the man of God is that your faith is anchored in the finished work of Christ on the cross of, cross of Calvary. God is not doing anything new. Hello. But it's not unbiblical for you to pray for new things. Really? Christ finished the work. Is seated at the right hand. What you are calling new is not new to God. 
It is already, already, already provided for in what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Let's quickly look at John chapter number 19. John chapter number 19. Let's speak it from verse 28. John chapter number 19. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and the field is sponged with sour wine, put it on Esau, and put it in his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. That word finished, translated in Greek, is tetelastai. That means the deal was negotiated, it was bargained, an agreement was reached. Now it is done. It is signed and sealed. You can't add to it. You can remove from it. Jesus Christ said, it is finished. I came. I saw. I conquered. My work is done. So your faith must be anchored in what Christ already finished. On the cross, cross of Calvary. There is nothing you are looking for on the face of this earth that is not included in that statement. It is finished. Let's go on. How do we prepare for these showers of blessing? It's all about preparation. Jesus Christ taught a lot of principles about preparation, but we're not going there tonight. Sometimes when you are not prepared for what God wants, you, wants to bless you with, when that blessing comes, Jesus Christ, if it meets you unprepared, you may mishandle it. I remember vividly, God sent somebody to me to prepare for ministry. I said, no. Very trusted man of God. He told me, he started telling me to prepare for a ministry of my own. He started telling me in 1997 or 98. I said, this man is one of the people that will be puffing up young guys to become. I said, no, now here we are going to die. Now here we die. <laughs> we don't need to go anywhere. Praise the Lord. That was my, the last ministry I was before God started this one. So, and then I came to Chicago, and that word would not leave me. Prepare. To be on your own. I said no. Because my background is flourish where God plants you. Don't go all over the place. That was my background. Whatever God has gifted you, use it where you are. The gospel is not to enrich yourself. It is to serve. So when God was showing me all these signs, giving me everything, I refused to. The last day in my former ministry is a day I will never forget. August 3rd. That was the, 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 the previous day before the last day. August 3rd, 2002. I was to prepare a simple message for Sunday and 2 a.m. I could not get a word from God. And I was struggling Ordinary to write a message on prayer. I couldn't put it together. And God said, you don't have, you are not going to preach today. I said, how will I not preach today? Today is Sunday, I'm the pastor. I said, no, you are not the pastor anymore. The church has moved. I said, what am I? Don't let me go into that story. I was confused to a level I called Mama Gio Adeboye. In Lagos, I got her phone number. I said, This is what I'm going through. Mama said, If you are a true child of God, then go and listen to God. If you have served with all of your heart, if you did not serve deceptively where you were, if God wants to give you your own, it will stand. So do whatever God tells you to do. I said, Mama, pray for me. She prayed. Then I had peace of mind. And then 4th of yeah, August came, and then what happened, happened. 
And then I discovered I was no longer wanted there. <laughs> then it now dawned on me that I wasn't prepared. I now began to go into fasting and prayer I should have done with ease. I first went into 21 days fasting, non-stop. And after that, 40 days. And I had three, four, five years to have done all those. Just to seek God. What is the direction? What is the name of the ministry? What are the scriptures I'm going to be standing on? How do you want us to do it? So you must prepare. Because when God is going to bless you, he wants to meet a prepared vessel. A call a people, a gathering of leaders in faith and in Christ, in commerce and industry, in sports and entertainment, in beauty and fashion, in government and in education, in spirit and in truth. We are moved with a passion and zeal for the lost and the hurting world. We are equipped to build bridges and raise platforms to society. We stress cultural relevancy and yet harmonize our diversity as we communicate by all means our message. We are gathering of the saints, raising leaders and rebuilding nations. Let's look at uh, a few things you can do to get prepared. Number one, you must detach from what brought dryness in the first place. So when the Bible talks about there shall be showers of blessing. What the Bible is saying is that there was a season of dryness. Let's quickly go to Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12 and 13. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer. And I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Now listen to this shocking revelation. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locust to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. Just like you read in the book of Joel, when God talks about his great army. That is sent among them. So for God to say, when he shuts up the heaven, it means the people had broken their covenant with him. For us to find ourselves in a season of dryness, we need to do self-evaluation. On my own part, what did I do to bring this season of dryness. A sister joined our church several years back. And um, she will come to me. Pastor, ah, this is what God showed me. I said, wow, that's great. Two weeks later, Pastor, this is what God showed me. Oh, that's beautiful. She will come again. Pastor, this is what God showed me. And she was doing that like six months. All of a sudden, there was no pastor, this is what God showed me anymore. And I was watching. She didn't know. So one day she came. She said, Pastor, after your message today, I feel convicted. I need to, I need to confess to you. What I, I said, Sister, I said, I know. <laughs> she said, I said, I know. And I've been waiting for you to come. She said, how did you know? I said, it's very simple. God didn't tell me. Common sense told me. If God has been revealing to you his will, his plan, and things have been going on, all of a sudden, everything just, the rain just stopped. I said, something has entered. She said, hey, ah. and you didn't call me. I said, ah, you're an adult. And I know in my spirit you will come because you're a child of God. So let's pray. So that what you were enjoying before that stopped can start again. The second thing, to do to prepare for the showers of blessing is to understand the purpose of the blessing. 
understand the purpose of the blessing. Let me say this carefully. Marriage was instituted by God. God said in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, It is not good for man to be alone. Therefore, he created a suitable helper. The Bible says, Whosoever findeth a wife findeth good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. As simple as marriage is, it's a gift from God. If your desire is to get married because your mates are getting married, God will not give you a husband or wife. Until your wanting to get married lines up with the purpose of God, God is not involved. If you want to get married to show off that me too, I don't get off the shelf. I know they for market again. <laughs> No. If you want to get rich so that you can buga all the time, you can show your shoulders. No. You want your ministry or whatever to be big so that people can know you? No. You must understand the purpose for which God wants to send you those showers of blessing. And the purpose, first and foremost, is to bring glory to God. Hallelujah. When God lifts you up, it is not for your personal blessing. It is for the glory of God and for the people. Look at what uh, Joseph told his brethren in Genesis chapter number 50 when they came, when their father died. And they came to him and said, Ah, now that our father is dead. This guy, oh, now Egypt would do so. <laughs> this guy, I ain't be the prime minister. He go show us paper. Oh. You know what it go happen? Ruben, now you be the first boy. You could go tell and say, before Papa die, he put word for Grando. Oh. See me could deal with your brothers, JJ. No, no, no deal with them because of what they do. What did Joseph say? In verse 20. He said, am I in the place of God to deal with you? He said, you taught it for evil. But as it is today, God has turned it around for good so that I can save many lives. So my being lifted up is not for me to shoulder high and oppress you. Any position of honor God puts you is his position of service. Praise the Lord. You see, if God gives you one billion dollars today, the only time and the only way you get blessed by that one billion dollar is to spend it the way God wants you to spend it. And after spending it the way God wants you to spend it, you now get rewarded back. Because it's not about how much. It is about how well. A lot of people have the money, but they cannot eat well. They are not able to sleep. I met a man during the time I used to minister full-time deliverance who hadn't slept natural sleep in 13 years. They had traveled abroad, done all kinds of things. Well, the guy. And I said, look, Bro, by this you will know that there are people that God has graced, that God has caught. I said, you sleep tonight. I was probably like 30, maybe 34, whatever at that time. He looked at me like, mm. <laughs> I said, you will sleep tonight. He said, how are you going to do it? I said, no, you, you got it wrong. It's not me. It's God. Yeah, but I've been said, forget about where you've been to. I said, put focus on God, not me. You are looking at the vessel, but I'm, I'm asking you to look at the source. That was the first night in 13 years. When he came to the program the following day, he came late. He says, ah, I overslept. I said, eh? You over what? 
I said, the prayer I gave you to do, 12 mid midnight to 3 a.m. He said, oh God, I know if you do I'm up. Now, 9 o'clock, where I not bed you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You must understand the purpose. Number three, you must recognize the source of the blessing. I'm teaching what I believe and what I do. I'm teaching what is my foundation. What drives me to do what I do. And that is to say that unless God is involved, as a child of God, I'm not talking about the people outside, it cannot work. Psalm number 127 verse 1. Unless the Lord builds, the labor in vain that build. Unless the Lord is watching over the city, they stay awake, but in vain. When God gave us the property we are working on right now, a very huge project, and I got to the church, and I told them, this is how much it's going to cost us. Ah, that is the Lord. Is da, 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 da. I told the uh, fundraising committee, I said, please don't pressure anybody. Don't manipulate anybody. Ah, they got mad. Somebody said, if you guys say this man are from rich family, where you come? <laughs> if you guys say you get money somewhere. Else. We are talking about millions here. Nobody say two million, three million. Nobody say four million. Nobody say five million. No. And he said, make with no pressure. Ah. See, this man, he get money. I said, don't worry. The Bible says, I will build my church. So what didn't concern me. The same way get and say one builder. I don't need to manipulate you. If he says he will build, I had him when I had him. He told me with my ears. I was looking at my phone. And he said, Abraham, lift up your face. And I lifted it. He said, look left. And I looked left. He said, that's your land. It's, the church. it's my church. That settled it. And before God and man... I went to bed with peace of mind. Because when God says, I will, you can take it to the bank. Praise the Lord. John chapter 15, verse 5. The Bible says, unless you abide in me and I in you, like a branch that cannot bear fruit except it abides in the vine, so are ye, you cannot do anything. I am the vine, here the branches, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, <laughs> this is what drives me. I can shout, I can scream, I can dramatize, I can speak gra big grammar without God. Now vanity oh. John 3, 27, when they came to report to Jesus Christ, ah, and this one is happening there, then John, Jesus Christ said, nobody can receive any good thing except it be given from above. James 1, 17, every good and perfect gift cometh from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness. That means he doesn't stand here now. And then turn again. And then turn again. No. Malachi 3, 6. Said, I the Lord, I do not change. It doesn't change. Look at Romans chapter number 9. Let's look at 15 and 16. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him who will let. Not of him that run it. Kita, kita, kita. Time to rub shoulders with the big boys. It is of God showing mercy. Ecclesiastes chapter number 9 verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift 
nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet the riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But time and chance happen to them all. God is your source. God is your source. Not man. God is your source. You must anchor your faith to him. I mean, I, 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 I have seen God demonstrate what I'm telling you now in ways that is just so amazing. As this guy is a Muslim guy. He used to be in our church. And God ministered to me to assist him. He was going to commit suicide because life was upside down. Nothing was working. So, I said, no problem. So he came to church that morning. He hadn't eaten for three days. It was in winter. And I was not going to go to church that day, but God said, go to church. I went. Go to church, I met him. He collapsed by the door. Long story short, I gave him $800. I had, I had $800 on me. I gave to him. I told Brother Richard, he's now a pastor, I said, go and get food. He got food, very hot chocolate, he drank. I said, go and get hotel, whatever. On Sunday, come. I'll say to you. Got him an apartment for three or four years. Was paying for him. Monthly, I will give him $400 for upkeep. He got papers to work. Things were going on. And he was fine. And then he left the church, went somewhere else. And then he came back one day. And he said, Pastor, ah, I'm hungry. He said, Pastor, can you give me $20? I said, I don't have. And it was not, it was not a lie. I did not have. I looked into my bag. There was no $5. Then at another time, he came again. He said, ah, Pastor, can I just have $10? I said, why are you always coming at the wrong time? I said, I don't have. He came again. On the fourth time, God now spoke to me. When I wanted you to give to him, I gave to you. I'm the source. You are the vessel. Now that I don't want you to give to him, because he's taking advantage of you, I made sure I dry your pocket whenever it's around. And as he leaves, <laughs> somebody can just come to me and say, Ah, Pastor, God just ministered to me. Oh. God just ministered to me oh, to just bless you. And they could give me $200. And after that, somebody comes and say, Ah, Pastor, ah. Your daughter doesn't have money to go to buy fuel. Oh. Daddy, can you give me just hundred dollars? I say ah, hundred dollars. Take one fifty, <laughs> and I'll give. And God told me, I'm teaching you that you can never be the source. I am the source. The Bible says God is our refuge. Psalm number forty-six, verse one, and a present help in the time of trouble. Is the source. If you do, if you look at people, you you miss it. Ah, this person can do this for me. If God has not graced him and empowered him, he cannot. A sister came to me one day. She said, Pastor, God just blessed me with this money. I don't know what to do with it. Two thousand dollars. She just gave to me, and I had put it in your drawer in the office. And I put it there some years back. And then the following day, a younger sister came <laughs> and said, Pastor, your grandson will not go to school because uh, the school fees is short $2,000. God said, take it out, give it to her. I'm standing before God, before whom I will give account if I'm telling lies. I have seen it over and over again. 
Somebody will just come, put money in my, my, in my hand. And by experience, I will ask God, Baba, now my own I'll be now for somebody else. <laughs> and sometimes God will say, take the tithe, take 10% of it, and keep the rest in a safe place. And somebody will come, as they come, I give. That's why people think I have money. When I tell them I don't have this, ah, Pastor, how can you not have <laughs> Imagine somebody came for 2000 I gave. Somebody came for 1000 I gave. Not knowing that prior to that time, God sent somebody to put in my hand. God is your source. And this source can never run dry. Number four, preparing for the showers. You must become one with the source of the blessing. You must become one. Before the fall of man, there was kononia, there was fellowship. Fellowship is intermingling. Fellowship is intimacy. Praise the Lord. Man and God were one. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. For in him dwelleth the fullness of God bodily. And you are complete in him. You are, com you are incomplete outside of Christ. You are complete inside of God. Who is the head of principality and power? But I know you are in charge. I'm going to call your son to agree with me. And you can't fail. And I always tell them also, when God has done something for you, don't call me first. <laughs> call the source first. Ah, Father Lord, I thank you. I give you praise. I give you glory. Ah, I didn't know you will favor me this way. I didn't know you will favor me this way. I didn't know you will favor me this way. Favor me this way. Thank you, my God. And I say, Father, Lord, thank you. Let me call your son who was praying with me to so just report to him. You report to the pastor. But you give praise and glory to the source. Number five. You must have unwavering faith in the promised showers of blessing. Unwavering what? Faith. faith. I have five more minutes to go. Unwavering faith. First Kings, we may not read it, chapter 18. You know the story in First Kings chapter 18. This um, is a story about the uh, prophet Elijah challenging the priests of Vaz, 400 of them, and that um, whoever calleth on their God and the God answers by fire, that is the God. Meanwhile, in the preceding chapter, Elijah had told the people, there shall neither be dew nor rain. According to my word, he locked the windows of heaven and put the keys in his pocket. Praise the Lord. And there was famine. Now he's going to call on God to bring down rain. To do something negative is always easy and fast. But to do positive, <laughs> the same guy, I said, there shall neither be dew nor rain few seconds and it was done but to now bring down the rain <laughs> hey he spoke in tongues he put his head within his knees he told the servant go look towards the river he said nothing no <laughs> okay <laughs> this they know they walk <laughs> he put it again <laughs> go look he said nothing <laughs> Ooh, the third time. Go look. Nothing. But somehow he believed. 
a lot of people give up on the sixth time. I've done it for six times. This thing doesn't work. God gave me a message about the importance of numbers. And I preached it for like three weeks. Praise the Lord. Why would God be concerned about numbers? Circle the walls of Jericho around once per day. On the seventh day, circle seven times. Praise the Lord. Go and dip in the river three times or seven times. Bring tent of everything that I give to you. Praise the Lord. Why would God be concerned about number if numbers doesn't matter? I'll just give to God anything that I want. This, da, 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 da. No. Praise the Lord. Somehow, somehow, Elijah believed. I believe in this rain. This rain will come. I'm not giving up. The seventh time, the servant returned. And the servant said, Oga, okay, the thing I see there, as small as the hand of a man, he said, that's enough. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That is what? That is enough. When I moved to Chicago, and I moved to Chicago by revelation, I was in New York. And one of the things I believed God placed in my heart is location. Stay on the north side. I'll give you a place. And it was tough. It was rough. My friends mocked me. People I called, my colleagues, they mocked me. Some of them mocked me to my face. One pastor used the pulpit like this to mock me in front of everybody. I won't say much. It was a program I went. The moment he saw me there, he just grabbed the microphone. It was to coordinate the program. It was to just coordinate the program. And I was at the back because I don't like going to the front. And they said, ah, and they, I said, no, let me sit that back. No, 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 okay, let me go. He already introduced the next person to come. But the moment he saw me, he said, ah, wait, wait, wait. I want to share a testimony. He said, when did I come to Chicago? How old is our church? God has blessed us with a property. And he went on and on and on and on and on and on. And I heard quietly in my spirit, Abraham, you are the one who is mocking us. But I will give you something far bigger. You keep your quiet. And don't be offended. He has just challenged me to bless you. Some of them said, eh, his church is there. They just, people just come, they fill up the place, and when there is no place again, they move out. Why can't he go to the suburb? All kinds of stuff. Praise the Lord. All of them now, when they heard what God did, they now said, ah, ah, so truly, he heard from God. It may look, I mean, waiting 10 years, 15 years, we got it the 15th year of the, of the church, just like Abraham. Everybody in the household of Abraham was getting pregnant. The people that did not have covenant with God, they were being blessed. The moment they get married, boom, pregnancy. But the one that had covenant with God, nothing was working. Do you think it was easy for Sarah to be provoked to a level to tell Abraham, look, person will get slave. Now he get what in slave get. So sleep with this girl. Whatever she gets is mine. Sometimes what God has promised may not come easy, but it will surely come. 
Praise the Lord. The Bible says the vision is for an appointed time. You don't get to choose the appointed time. Your business is to wait for the appointed time. Sometimes we want to decide when. But God is the one that is in charge to decide when. Praise the Lord. I'll just take one more because of my time. Praise the Lord. Just one more. Stand in the righteousness of God. Stand. One of the things you do to prepare for these showers of blessing is to stand in the righteousness of God. One of the greatest weapons of the devil against us as children of God is the weapon of condemnation. Is the weapon of what? Condemnation. The Bible says, For all have sinned, all have sinned, and fell short of the glory of God. Pastor, apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, children of God, everybody sinned. Nobody can boast of anything. Praise the Lord. But a time came that God said, the only set of people that are qualified for my blessing are the righteous. And when we talk about being righteous, we are not talking about self-righteousness. Isaiah chapter number 54 verse 17, the Bible says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And any tongue that rises up against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me. Listen to this. If you don't see yourself as righteous, God forbid, you won't get what God wants for you. You don't qualify for it. You don't pay for it. Jesus was blameless. He became the sinner. He swapped position. How many people have seen that movie, The Prince and the Pauper? They swapped position. The prince, it, it doesn't make sense that the prince has taken your position to go and become homeless in the street. And you, the pauper, in the palace, you are still behaving as the pauper. You can't command the servants to come. Say, ah. I don't, I, I respect them. Oh, I can't command them. Oh, this food is too much. Oh, eat! <laughs> because the prince is coming back to the palace. Let me give you a, a few scriptures. Isaiah 54, 14. In righteousness, you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near you. So it is righteousness that establishes you. Psalm number 5, verse 12. The Bible says, God compasseth about with favor as with a shield. He compasseth the righteous. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. So if you don't see yourself as righteous, why, why are you asking God for favor? Because the favor that is available is for the righteous. Psalm number 34, verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry you are praying but you say ah what, when we were growing up in my church that time as little children uh, 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 our pastor would say ah awaile share we sinners we are not worthy we are unrighteous people but have mercy upon us. It is when we now grew up and God began to talk to us that those prayers were causes. You can't be a sinner and be bold. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as what? As lion. Boldly before the throne of grace and, and mercy. Psalm number 37 verse 25. I have been young and now I am old. I am yet to see the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants beg for bread. Psalm number 92, verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And lastly, Psalm, Proverbs 10, 6. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. 
If you are a righteous person, can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. If you are righteous, tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't struggle. <laughs> Jesus paid the price for you to become righteous. Receive that righteousness. Put it on as a garment. Wear it everywhere you go. Let's rise up on our feet. I want you to pray one prayer before I call the man of God to take over. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. I am ready. For your showers of blessing. Let them come. Let the showers begin to come. Oh Lord, I am ready. My vessel is ready. Send down your showers of blessing. Send down your mighty showers of blessing. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray to God.